everybody and welcome to Alien Spartan 117. Today we are going to be having a discussion and taking a look at the faceless character who we all know and love as the Master Chief. To so many people a machine which they embody themselves as and use as Bungie intended so long ago a blank slate to basically take the journey that is the Halo universe in themselves. But how often do we stop and think, who is this man behind the green mask that we are playing as? Who is the Master Chief? Now, we don't often stop and think about what this man's mind is and what goes on inside the head of the faceless protagonist. We oftentimes lose sight that this man is a warrior but he is also a victim of child kidnapping. He is also a victim of a brutal indoctrination. We must take a look at the mental state of the Master Chief to really get a grasp of who this character is and where he could go. The Reclaimer trilogy or saga was originally intended to delve into the mind of the Master Chief. And I feel, even though we got away from that a little bit with Halo 5, that it is going to come back big time, showing off his character and where he is going as a person with Halo 6. So let's take a look at the Master Chief and figure out who the man is and what goes on inside of his mind. Records show Spartans routinely exhibited mildly sociopathic tendencies, difficulty with socialization, and The records fiction. show efficient behavior operating in hazardous situations. I supplied the tools to maintain that efficiency. Do you believe the Master Chief succeeded because he was, at his core, broken? What does John... To truly understand the mental state of the Master Chief, one must look at the most dramatic event to happen in his entire life. This would be the abduction at the age of six, where he was taken from his family by the Office of Naval Intelligence and forced into a world that he knew nothing about. A world of discipline, a world of war, and he was forced to grow up much quicker than he should have. This would be a very dramatic experience for any six-year-old. In fact, in today's modern society, this child would probably be forced into rehab, and he would be forced to basically go through multiple sessions of therapy, just to undergo the dramatic experience of being taken from all you know by these people who do not have your best interest at heart. So we also know that the Chief probably has a good bit of regret about this. In Halo 5, whenever Cortana says that she is going to give people a chance to live more than they should naturally, then Chief gives a simple response, like Halsey did for me. So the Chief obviously has this playing on his mind. And after going through all this, and after going through all the dramatic experiences of the child, what has the Master Chief got in return for his services? This is what he has gotten. The heart stopped when Sam took a shot in the chest. No human life signs detected. The captain, he's one of them. We can't let the flood get off this ring. You know what he'd expect. What he'd want us to do. It's done. I have the code. I'm getting you out of here. No, no, you're not. No, don't let her go. Don't ever let her go. Send me out.
I'm not coming with you this time. What? Most of me is down there. I only held enough back to get you off the ship. No. That's not... We go together. It's already done. I am not leaving you here. John. I've waited so long to do that. It was my job to take care of you. We were supposed to take care of each other. And we did. Cortana, please. Wait. Welcome home, John. It's good to see you. You've changed. It was time. I know we have a disagreement, but once you understand my plan... Your plan is we do as you say. I'm offering people a chance to be more than they are naturally. Like Dr. Halsey did for me. What are you... I just needed to know if I could still trust you. Be safe inside this cryptum until my work is done. Cortana. Goodbye, John. As you can see. In return for the services that the Master Chief has done for humanity, the sacrifice of his life and everything it could have been at the age of six to become a Spartan, forced into this life, he has endured nothing but trouble, pain, and suffering. One mission after the other, repeatedly, and this doesn't even cover all the multiple deaths of his comrades that he has witnessed during the novels. The Master Chief, in return for his services to humanity, has been given nothing but mental scarring and pain that would bring any human to the edge of an insanity. And as for the Chief, how does he begin to feel about his condition? By Halo 5, what is the state of how he is beginning to feel about being a Spartan and what he has done? This is how he feels about it. We were built for combat and raised for war. Spartans never die, but equipment can be retired. I've made my choice. My path is clear. Does the Master Chief view himself as equipment? Or how is he beginning to view himself? Cortana wants to ask them to figure out which one of them is the machine. The Master Chief has always viewed himself as a machine. And he must follow orders without question, because he must fight for the greater good. This has been the mentality of this man through his entire life. But all the years of suffering, all the years of non-stop war and battle, and the playing of the mind of seeing your brothers bombed and your sisters torn apart by a ferocious enemy, has left him hardened and a broken shell of a man. And as he continues to develop as a person, we have seen him go against what he was always sworn to do. The Master Chief, who was raised on Reach, the little boy being indoctrinated. The Chief of just Halo 3, who would follow his orders without question. Would he have done this? Does this sound like the Master Chief that we know? Give me that chip. 
The didact has to be stopped. If you won't do that, I will. I am ordering you to surrender that AI! No, sir. Blue team, stand down. I have a job to do. Cortana's our concern now, sir. Like hell she is. <laughs> Disobeying a direct order from a commander and also going against the UNSC's wishes on a personal quest are not the actions of a trained Spartan II super soldier. These are the actions of a human being who has come into terms with who he is and what he believes in. Obviously the Master Chief still believes in defending humanity at all costs. Because when he goes against the orders of Del Rio, it is to defeat the Diodact, which is obviously a massive threat to humanity. Whenever he's told Locke that he would not give over his search to Cortana to the services of Osiris, the chief proclaimed here that he was going to rescue his comrade. Obviously this would be a journey which would lead the chief to a place that he did not expect. But still... The fact remains that this was a very human action by the Master Chief. In between the events of Halo 4 and 5, we see that the Chief directly goes against orders repeatedly. He was told by Admiral Hood after the final defeat of the Didact supposedly during the fragment of Installation 03. He was told to take a rest, to kick back and relax. But the Chief went immediately on another mission leaving Hood ecstatical that he basically denied the order for a shore leave and to take time to rest and he went continually on another mission another mission after another mission after another mission why would the master chief do this because as I said he is a man that has been through a massive strife in his life as long as you continue to follow your missions, to fight, and to stay active, you do not allow your mind to play on you. You do not allow all the images and all the horror of your life to enter your mind and to take control of you. I honestly believe that the Master Chief suffers from some sort of post-traumatic stress syndrome. This is something that many actual military veterans suffer from. And a man who has went through what the Master Chief has would obviously have conditions of post-traumatic stress. I believe that if he stops for just one moment, it will allow his mind to take control. And he will be forced to set and endure the horrors and all the pain that this man has endured in his life. As long as you stay on mission, you do not give those thoughts time to take hold. As we look into Halo 6 and the state of the Master Chief, he is going to have to take on one of his closest allies of his entire life, which would be Cortana. And he is probably going to be faced with a decision where he is forced to end her existence for the defense of humanity and all of the galaxy. But this man is broken. In so many ways, the Master Chief is the greatest and strongest human to ever live. But at the end of the day, he is not a machine, he is a man. And every man has his breaking point. The Chief is reaching his breaking point, I do believe. And we may see some sort of event take place in Halo 6 that truly shows this. Because you can't go on forever. Spartans were built for war and they were built to never fail. And they have succeeded in that goal on more than one occasion. But they are, at the end of the day, only people just like me and you, with their flaws and with their ultimate point of no return. 
Is the Master Chief suffering from a sort of post-traumatic stress? Only time will tell. But this man definitely has so much horror in his mind that he would never be able to live a normal life. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this very human look at the Master Chief and how that he is truly more man than he is machine and the horrors of war can only take place inside of his mind. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'd like for you all to please hit that subscribe button and hit a like. Um, I would really appreciate that. Share this to your friends if you're interested. Uh, hit that subscribe button for the upcoming Halo alternate history series that's coming up along with multiple more videos along with the look of the rise of the precursors and a look at their history and just more all around Halo related content coming soon. So please go ahead, check out some of these other videos and I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.